Hey, you might still remember this little guy, which is my first bracket that I ever 3D printed. And that's the bracket for this brake fluid reservoir that sits up here because I have mounted a new Brembo master cylinder. So I have designed this little bracket in a way that it mimics the shape of the brake fluid reservoir. And now that I'm starting to learn how to fabricate my own parts from metal, I thought this might be a good first project to get going. The dimensions are pretty simple. It's basically an L shape that is all around four millimeters thick. And then this little extension at the back that is then eight millimeters thick. To make it look a little bit sleek, I've designed these triangular shaped cutouts. That might be the most tricky part of this whole thing. What I'm still unsure of is whether I should bend the L or do two pieces and then weld them together. Since the easier way is to just bend it, I'm gonna start with that, see how it turns out. If it doesn't work, we're gonna attempt to weld it. It's actually quite a delicate piece to start with maybe. I don't know, we'll see. I wasn't sure how the bend would affect the length. So what I'm thinking now is that I'm just gonna cut a strip of the right width that is longer and then just simply cut the two ends so it matches this design. I just thought about changing the design slightly because the bottom part here is actually wider. It's 15.5 millimeters. So the 12 millimeter wide bracket doesn't really flow that well with the main part. So what I want to try is to make the bottom a little bit wider and then curve it up so everything flows a little bit better. I'm not sure if it works, but we give it a go. So all there's left to do for now is to make a straight cut. The bend isn't as sharp as I wish it was. I'm still gonna progress with this and see if all the rest works out. If it does and I dislike this bend in the end, I'm just gonna attempt to weld it. But for now, let's keep going with this and just see where it gets us. We now have the L. That worked quite well. I had to square it a bit because the bend wasn't quite parallel. I go pretty symmetrical already, which is nice. I hope that it doesn't deform too much when I weld the back piece on, but we have to see how that goes. We now have the two pieces. They fit together very, very nicely, and it already looks kind of like the 3D printed version. I'm not too sure if I like this round edge. But before I worry about this, I want to see how well I can actually weld these two pieces together. Because I've been practicing some tick welding. The course from Dusty gave me a very, very good understanding. And I've basically used the same system from the course to move over to carbon steel. I ran some dry welds, then introduced filler rod and ran some stringer bead. Then I moved on to butt joints and I even moved on to some filler joints. I was really surprised how well it worked. But one major thing that has helped me to get better results was that I switched the torch to this. It's a 17 style torch from CK Worldwide. This one gives me so much more flexibility. This is such a game changer. What I'm a little bit worried about when it comes to this little piece is that I might burn away the edges, which is kind of crucial to the overall shape of this part. I don't know, we'll just have to try and see and um, hope for the best. <laughs> Not my most beautiful filler joint, 
because I was so scared of overheating, I didn't give it enough heat. So the filler material actually doesn't really blend well to the two sides. I might just do another run without filler material and try to blend it a little bit more so it looks better. That already looks a bit better, not perfect. Maybe I can clean it up a bit afterwards. All right, I'm happy with that. Okay, so this is what it looks like at the moment. I have three tiny gaps right here, here, and on the other side. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of filler rod in there and then grind those smooth again. To file this inside corner down, this small new set of files that I got might actually come in very handy. So I'm gonna start with the round version and then maybe go for the square one depending on how I like it because it's kind of like with a haircut. You can always cut it, but you can't glue it back on. The same with this one. You can go from a round transition to a square one, but you can't go the other way around. So let's just give it a try. I hope it doesn't take ages to file this down, but we'll see. Oh yes, that takes ages. Now I only have a little bit of a rough transition right here. So I'm gonna take that out. I like the transition on this side, which is nice and round. I think it flows well with the more open angle right here. And then with a the narrow angle right here, I've emphasized this edge by making it more square on this side. I think it transitions nicely into the round shape. Also, I think it's kind of funny because it still looks relatively rough, but I hope that once it's painted black, it might be a little less bulky. Now onto the tricky part, the triangles on here. No way. I've made a big mistake. No. Uh, it would have been too easy. I just want to double check if it actually everything fits. And I noticed that Obviously this L has to go one direction and it has to go this way around. And now if I put this on, the outflow of the reservoir is on the wrong side. So it points backwards, but it needs to point forward. So I welded on the second piece backwards. Uh, I guess that comes with practice and also using your brain. So we have to start over again. Here we are again, I have three new pieces cut out. It's actually not bad that I have to redo it because this time I can improve a few things. Wear this on there to have a nice edge. Also, I'm just gonna shape this later. What I've also done to make my life easier is that I've marked all of the lines that I needed right at the big plate. So that made everything a lot easier and a lot quicker. Okay, so here's the plan to cover out these triangles. The sides and these stems in the middle are all three millimeters. So what I did with this one is to mark the outsides at three millimeters and then draw two triangles just freehand. But what I also need to keep in mind is that at the back there's this piece, so I don't want this to interfere with the transition. I just quickly drew up another design. I don't really like the two triangles. It, it, for me, it feels not balanced. I'm thinking about adding three, but for three big ones, there's not enough room without destroying the transition at the back. So I thought about going two thirds with the first two and then adding a bigger one at the bottom. And that hopefully also reduces the imbalance between the wider part at the bottom and the narrower part at the top. That might go very well or terribly wrong. I don't know yet. We we'll see. That's the second drill that's broken in the process. Good thing that when I bought this tool cabinet, it came with a lot of tools because it's second hand and someone left a lot of tools in there. And one of the things was a completely new set of drills. This is what we're working with. Hopefully the hand files fit in there and then it's just a lot of filing. I didn't do myself a favor with those triangles. The tiniest file I have, and that's the only one that fits inside the holes that I've drilled, is a super cheap one that I got from a hardware store years ago. And it doesn't really do anything, 
to it. It takes forever to at least get a triangular shape. I have one done, it took me about half an hour of just filing this down. <sighs> uh, is there an easier way to do this? Anyways, no point in complaining, so let's just keep at it. All right, the triangle cutouts are done. Now I only need to shape the top bit so it actually matches the round corners of the brake fluid reservoir. And then we're done with the form. Then we only need to drill the holes and hopefully in the end, everything looks kind of nice. That actually works quite well. It gives a nice round corner to it. Almost there. All right, this is the last step. Just drilling the two holes for the screws and then we're done. I mean, what can go wrong? I'm worried about that when it flexes because of the rubber padding that I'm gonna be not straight through to the other side. Oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I hope that works. Put this down here and then clamp this up here. All right, now we're gonna do the bottom piece. That actually works well. So that worked out. Just got scared for nothing. It's not hot. But since I've touched so many hot things while welding. Nice. Yeah, that looks good. Nice, look at this. I just barely couldn't reach this side with the cordless drill. So I went to the reversible countersink. I got those actually for my handlebars, but it always comes in very handy. That's actually looking not too bad. I like it. Let's see how it looks on the bike. One of the things I got along with the steel and the new files was a bunch of stainless screws. And those things are just so important for just being able to build stuff. I never really had a good set of screws. So I've got these that have a round head like this. And then the other ones have a cylinder shaped head. I got all of them from M5 all the way to M8 in different lengths. So it should be set for all the basic tasks on the bike. I'm gonna leave it like this for now. Look at this, it turned out so much better than I thought it would. Obviously, I'm by far not at the point where I want to be, but I'm surprised by how good it turned out. This one's also too long, so I guess I'll have to learn how to shorten screws. One of the many things I don't know yet. Okay, <laughs> so that's how you shorten a screw. Just cut it, grind it smooth, and then hopefully this works. Nice, okay. <laughs> That's easier than I thought it would be. That actually looks quite cool. Imagine it's black, and then I think it will blend in very, very nicely. I also try to minimize the tube that I need, just so it doesn't stick out way here. I hope this works. I hope it doesn't compromise on the functionality. But apart from that, I'm so, so happy with how this turned out. Going from the 3D printer plastic version now to the metal one and everything fits very well. The fitment right here is super nice. It doesn't have any gaps. I'm actually quite surprised how smooth it went. Well, we had this little hiccup with the welding, but apart from that, I'm so happy that my TIG welding is at the point now where I can 
weld something together, it holds, and then I might have to clean it up a bit. But understanding TIG welding opens up so many more projects. As one of the next ones, I've ordered some aluminum for the C plate. We're gonna weld in a bracket in the back. And if you've been here all the way from me designing this as my first 3D printing project and struggling with a 3D printer, all the way to now building it from metal for the first time, thank you so much for all the support. This has been such a long journey to get here and so many little steps that I had to take. What I've learned is that actually using the hand files takes much longer, but gives it a much, much nicer finish and much more control over the shape that you actually want to have, especially on a small piece like this. So I'm gonna link all of the hand files that I've used down below in case you want to get a set. Some good hand files are definitely a worthwhile investment. And if you've enjoyed this video, you can watch the one where I set up the 3D printer and designed and printed this as my first project. I'm gonna link it right here. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I see you in the next one.